across the United States, Americans don't speak the same English. Sure, they might all speak the same language, but dialects vary from state to state. Linguists have long carved up the states into distinct dialect zones, but not everyone agrees where the divisions are. Borders can vary from source to source to source. And so, when I one day curiously googled what my dialect of my hometown was, South Bend, Indiana, well, I was disappointed by the results. So I became determined. I'd find out what dialect South Bend was in so I could help properly set the dialect borders of the U.S. That proved to be difficult, to say the least. South Bend sits right between two major dialects. To the north, there's inland North American English, and to the south, there's midland American English. But even when I went to one of the most cited texts on the subject, the Atlas of North American English, which was written largely by an esteemed pioneer in his field, William LeBove, well, this was the only thing I could find, which isn't even close to accurate. I mean, here we've merged the Midland accents, the entire East Coast has merged for some reason, and entire states are unaccounted for. So I decided to take things into my own hands by asking locals how they speak. That way, I could compare the South Bend dialect with both the Midland American English and the Inland North American English and see which one was more closely aligned. Fortunately, there's a lot of literature regarding the differences between these dialects. For example, a phenomenon known as short A raising, in which the short A sound, A, is pronounced more like an E or an E. In Midland American, this only occurs before nasals. So, for example, take apple and ample, where the second A is raised. Apple, ample. Apple, ample. In the inland accent, though, A is raised everywhere. Instead of having apple and ample, you'd have apple and ample. Both of them get raised. Another difference is something known as the cot-cot merger. Though most of America has already merged these two sounds, the inland accent still retains a difference. Thus, we would expect to hear cot versus cot, stock versus stock, walk versus walk, etc. for most Americans. But in the inland accent, we'd hear cot versus quad, stock, stock, walk, walk, etc. But really, the biggest difference is something known as the northern city's vowel shift. In the inland accent, a lot of vowels have shifted around. So, for example, when most Americans say something like trap, in the inland accent, you'd say something like trap. It's okay if you don't understand this diagram. All you really have to understand is these different words are shifting around. So most Americans might say kit, but kit would become kept. Dress became dress, strut became strut, fought became fought, and caught became cat. So if we can get a number of locals to pronounce a few sentences as they normally would, we could compare to see where the South Benders more closely align, the inland accent or the midland accent. And that's exactly what I did. I curated these three sentences, which, you know, though, though they're a little nonsensical, they illustrate the differences between the dialects. For example, you can compare the caught-caught merger at lawn and on, or you can see the short A raising at mad versus man. The green highlights are sounds in which that R sound, it might affect the vowel differently. The red highlights are where the Midland accents have a bit more of a fronted vowel. The blue highlights are instances of the northern city's vowel shift, etc. Once I collected enough survey responses, and received some very generous help from my roommate's family members, thank you again, I could compile the results into a spectrogram, which is a program that would allow me to compare the two different sounds. So, for example, here's two different speakers saying the phrase madman. On the left, you can see that the height of those lines, it's about the same for the two. Mad man, or mad man. But on the right side, you can see that the man is a little bit higher. Mad man, mad man. That's because on the left, that's an inland accent in which both A's are raised. On the right, though, we have the Midland accent, in which the A is only raised before the nasal. Now imagine rinsing and repeating this for all the different sound changes. That way we can compare to see where South Bend accent is really closer to. So, what were the results? Well, first, there was a lot of strong evidence linking South Bend to the Midland accent. For example, every single local that I surveyed demonstrated the short A raising only pre-nasally. So they all said, mad man. And also, there was another helpful bullet point, something known as O-fronting. This is a phenomenon in which only Midland speakers, well, they advance their O to more like an O. The best example of this would be someone pronouncing scones more like scones. But the evidence, it also goes the other way. Some South Bend speakers actually had some instances of the Northern City's vowel shift. And moreover, all the South Bend speakers resisted the cot-cot merger. Both of those features are something that we share with the North. But honestly, that shouldn't be all too surprising. I mean, if we're right on the border between two major dialect groups, we would expect to share features between the two. And so, really, is the South Bend dialect inland Northern American or Midland American? Well, the truth is, it's a little bit of both.